I'm a bit overwhelmed. Some may call it uninspired. But what is there left to do when someone's so young and admired? And what's the point of it all if it just goes to waste? What's up, AP Universe? This is TJ Horansky, Chicago correspondent for AP TV, here with Mr. Will Pugh of Cartel. What's up, man? Chillin', man. So we're out here at the Diversity Driving Range in uh, a rainy, uh, somber Chicago, Illinois today. Um, but we've been hitting a couple golf balls, and on a scale of one to Tiger Woods, circa 1997, how are you feeling about your swing right now? I'm feeling probably about a six or seven. I could probably get a... Uh Get a few more hours in, be, be close to a nine, we'll see. Because uh, Tiger 97 is probably more like a 2,000 on a scale of one to 10. Yeah. So, uh, Will, you've been pretty vocal about your love for the game of golf uh, throughout the years uh, in interviews and on Twitter and stuff. Uh, maybe tell us a little bit more about how you got started playing golf. Uh, my dad was a big golfer, uh, so when I was like five, six, he was playing a lot. Um, I was just in baseball, so he was like, all right, I'm going to get you a couple clubs. I go over the course with him. Um, and pretty much, I mean, he's kind of, a, kind of a golf purist, so he didn't want kids out on the course, like, taking up all the time, getting in people's way. So he gave me a seven iron for Christmas. And we had some some land out in, uh, at our house and basically pointed at two trees about 100 yards away. He's like, when you can hit that 7-iron through those trees five times in a row, I'll take you to play. It took me about a year and a half. <laughs> Not of hard practice because I just didn't care because it's really hard. Um, tell me how golf has sort of formed you as a person, uh, the lessons that it's taught you, and specifically looking at it from a musician standpoint. Um, I know, personally, it's a game that teaches me patience and, and things like that. So maybe talk about um, what golf has done for you in, in that aspect. Um, I think the biggest thing, like from a personal standpoint, is just, like you said, like you only have yourself to blame for anything. Um, it's even at like the upper echelons of golf when you're really good, it's still very humbling. So I feel like it tempers your your boastfulness of your talent in any way, shape, or form, um, because you know that you might have a hot round one day, turn around the next day, and just be really bad. Um, I think it's all about that, and it's determination, and it's practice, because you can't just walk out there and nail golf balls or pl have a good round without practicing and really dedicating your time to it. And you know, I think from a musical standpoint, that's the biggest thing, is that you have to work at it. You can't just go out there and nail it. You gotta learn things about it. You gotta have the technique. You gotta do all that. But then you gotta forget about it. Cause I think that's with music. You know, there's so many things. It's like guitar. Which fret am I playing? What chord am I playing? Like, there's all those things you you think you would be, you know, thinking about as you're playing. But in reality, you just have to let go and like let your talent and your knowledge take over. So you just do it second nature. And golf's the same way. I mean, one of the biggest Bobby Jones quotes is that. You know, your best golf swing comes when you're thinking about the least. And that's really kind of the same thing with music. Back when I was saying the, uh, you know, you might not have your best day, um, I think that correlates to music as a songwriter because you're not going to sit down and write a hit song every time. And you just got to kind of let it be, kind of let your, your talent, your skill come to you. And, you know, sometimes you're going to write a bad song and you're going to forget about it and you're going to put it away. Um, but you take the positives that you're working towards something that is not just, you know, the end all be all. This golf swing, you're make or break, you're gonna die, or you know, whatever. It's not that big of a deal. And you just learn to play on and keep doing your thing. You know, it's golf's a game that's taught me a lot of lessons over the course of the years from just being really mad at it, throwing clubs, just being a little bastard, to really, you know, reining that in and being like, listen, the only person you gotta be mad at is yourself. It's just why are you going to be mad at yourself? you got to go hit it again. you got to get in the hole. Just go do that. Or am I still censored by all that it needs to comply? So now I find myself here with this purpose and straight to practice. A couple weeks ago you were tweeting with Sean Mackin from Yellow Card about putting together a scene golf tourney. Um, if you could have your ideal scene foursome, uh, who else would be on your team with you? 
See, the only golfers I know <laughs> are not in the scene at all. <laughs> uh, I know Sean plays, obviously. Um, uh, Kenny G and Alice Cooper. <laughs> G and Alice Cooper. Hey, that's that would be an interesting foursome right there. Sean Mack and Kenny G and Alice Cooper and Will Pugh. That would be amazing. I would pay to see that. Uh, me, me too. <laughs> Uh, so for uh, a lot of AP fans who aren't familiar with the game of golf, um, who may be interested in, in you know, pursuing uh, or going out and just playing but have never really experienced it, what sort of advice would you have for uh, a novice golfer who is just getting into the game? Uh, first, get lessons, um, because there's no way you're ever going to figure out what to do without lessons. Um, it's a very, very tough game, but it's, it's very rewarding, and you don't take it too seriously at first. Just have fun. I mean, if you're old enough, go out with your friends, drink some beers, drive around the golf course. Not much better than that. And then just, you know, hit it, pick it up, hit it again. It's great. We could if all we must have known. Oh, no. We're going out. We're going to miss this. We were not alive. So um, focusing on more cartel-specific news, uh, Collider came out earlier this year. Uh, you guys are on the Glamour Kills Tour until the end of November. Any other future plans? Any other... Uh, you guys been writing at all? Any recording plans anytime soon? Well, we kind of uh, double dipped when we did Collider. Um, in January of this year, we went in and did an acoustic, like unplugged live album um, that we also videotaped while we uh, while we did it. And, um, Zach and Kenneth uh, that produced the first couple records and mixed this record. They uh, we did it at their studio. They edited everything. It sounds awesome. Um, and we're planning on releasing that sometime early next year with uh, also a little mini documentary. Um, we're shooting some B-roll on this tour. And then um, there's some past tours we have videos from. And we're going to do like a little sit-down, like expose sort of interview. Because um, I think a lot of people really, I mean, they know about our band. They know what we've done, like the band in the bubble, for instance. Um, but they don't know the real story, and they don't know us as people. Um, they don't know Will the golfer. They don't know Will the golfer, exactly. So we're going to talk for 45 minutes about just that. <laughs> Not really. Um, but it's kind of the story of cartels. I mean, I think everybody knows what, you know, our rise from the Ransom EP through the self-titled Band in the Bubble. But what's happened since then, I think, is... Um, I think it would be pretty inspiring for bands that are starting out, just when, us, us going DIY, like really uh, taking the reins of our band and how things are done and especially with the production of the record doing it ourselves uh, we're gonna do a little like sit down like behind the album sort of thing too so it'll be a little uh, it'll be very interesting for cartel fans and for anybody who's just a fan of like hearing about bands experiences on the road and then 2015 we're doing a chroma 10-year anniversary tour so is that for sure thing already? Uh, I mean, it's for sure on our end. We, I mean, obviously haven't started booking anything or talking to bands or anything like that. But next, it, like we're going to try to re-release Chroma on vinyl, do a because it's an important record for us, obviously, and um, it means a lot to a lot of our fans. So we want to do it right, make sure it's really cool, and um, it'll probably take a whole year to plan it. So that's all I got for you today. I'm TJ. This is Will. See you next time.